In this video, we'll be going through gas laws. Things that we'll talk about will include properties of gases, how they behave physically, what is pressure, what is partial pressure, what are the different gas laws, and how do they relate to the ideal gas law. These are our syllabus dot points. Gases are one of the three primary states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And as we've learned before, the particle model helps to describe the particle structure of gases and that they are highly dispersed particles that have a lot of energy. Thinking about this can also help to explain its properties. So the dispersion of molecules leads to its low density, also its ability to be free-flowing or free-forming, meaning that it fills any volumes, and it also leaks from systems. And the space between the molecules of the gas also allowed to be compressible and expandable. The volume will also change with increasing temperature. Diffusivity is when gases will mix or become diffused together to form a homogeneous mixture. An example of one of these mixtures is air itself. There are a large variety of gases which make up the air that we breathe, such as nitrogen, oxygen, and small amounts of argon, although they are not clearly distinguished. We briefly described how the particle theory demonstrated that the gas particles are separated from one another. Kinetic molecule theory helps to explain how they are moving with energy and it says that the macroscopic properties are dictated by their microscopic properties, meaning that what we see is going to be dictated by what is happening in a small scale. So gas particles are going to travel in straight lines. They're constantly colliding each other in an elastic way, meaning that no energy is lost. They're small, so the volume is negligible relative to the container. They have a negligible interaction of forces between the gas particles. And the temperature is going to dictate the kinetic energy of the gas. Just to recap on volume, volume is simply the amount of space which is occupied by a substance. It can either be in milliliters or liters. And one meter cubed volume is equivalent to 1000 liters. Often we know what pressure means. If you're getting a massage per se, you could say that the masseuse needs to apply more or less pressure. We may want to use that term pressure and force interchangeably, but pressure is actually force which is exerted over a surface area. Since pressure is force over area, we know that SI unit for force is N, and the SI unit for area is meters squared. So the SI unit for pressure is going to be newtons per meter squared. It also gives us a new unit, which is called the Pascal. Pressure has a wide variety of units. An atmosphere is the pressure within the atmosphere of Earth, and that's equal to 1.01325 times 10 to the 5 pascals. One tor is equal to 1 on 760 atmospheres, or 133.322 pascals. And one bar, which is an upcoming unit which we use more often, is equal to 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals, or 1 times 10 to the 2 kilopascals. You won't have to memorize these units, they should be given to you in an exam. We now know that gases have the diffusivity property, meaning that they form homogeneous mixtures. If we were to mix the pressure of that mixture, the pressure would be equivalent to the pressures of all the different gases. So we have this formula, the P total equals to the P of gas 1 plus the P of gas 2, gas 3, etc. Partial pressure is important because if we have a homogeneous mixture of gases which easily fills volume, each of the gases we assume occupy the same volume within the gas canister. So we know that the gas occupies the same volume in the gas canister. Well, how much is that exactly? So we know that gases occupy the same volume in a gas canister. Well, how much is that exactly? Molar volume is the volume of one mole of gas at STP, which is zero Celsius and 100 kilopascals which equals to 22.7 liters. The same is for RTP, which is at 25 degrees Celsius, and that equals to 24.79 liters. These are all constants for ideal gases, so meaning that all gases will have this particular volume for one mole, and this is what we refer to as Avogadro's law. Don't worry about memorizing these values, they will also be given to you in the data sheet. So an ideal gas is one which we assume follows the kinetic molecular theory of having elastic and non-interactive collisions. However, we know the idea that there are going to be no interactions between gases is not actually true in reality 
because we know that although they may be minimal, there will still be some intermolecular interactions between the gas molecules. So, the ideal gas law provides us this relationship between pressure and volume, which is said to be equal to N, which is the volume, multiplied by R, which is the universal constant, the gas constant, and T, which is the temperature. This value for R you can find on your data sheet. So the gas laws are a set of four laws that were developed to combine with one another to provide a relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature for an ideal gas. The first law is Boyle's law, which is the law that claims that the volume of a particular amount of gas held at a constant temperature will vary inversely with the applied pressure when the temperature and the mass are constant. So what does this mean? Well, essentially what it's saying is that as we increase pressure, the volume is going to decrease. So volume is proportional to 1 over pressure. So if we're looking at this example, we have P1V1 and we want to work out what P2V2 equals. So pressure times volume should equal to pressure times volume for the second system after it has been changed. If I increase the pressure, then the volume must decrease proportionally in order for P2V2 to be equal to P1V1. Inversely, this is true. So if I decrease the pressure, the volume must also increase. So we can understand from this that an increase in pressure is equivalent to a decrease in volume. The second of these laws is Charles' laws, which states that this time, if we keep all the variables constant except for volume and temperature, as we increase the volume, the temperature will also increase. And this makes sense because as we increase the temperature for a gas molecule, we're going to be giving it more energy, meaning that it is going to be traveling outwards more. This means that Charles' law, V is proportional to T, is that V1 on T1 equals to V2 on T2. So if I increase V1, I must increase T1 in order for V2 over T2 to be equal to the same thing. This also applies if I decrease it. So if I decrease V1, then similarly, T1 must also decrease for V2 over T2 to be the same value. The third law is Gay-Lussac's law, and it deals with pressure and temperature, this time saying that pressure is directly proportional to temperature, meaning that if I increase the pressure, I'm also going to be increasing the temperature, and if I'm decreasing the pressure, I'm decreasing the temperature. This is very similar to Charles' law, except this time we are dealing with pressure and temperature. The fourth law, Avogadro's law, is slightly different as it deals with the amount, and this kind of has something to do with what we talked about earlier regarding molar volume. So if we keep the conditions of temperature, pressure and volume the same, then this must mean that they have the same number of molecules. So volume and amount are directly proportional. So V is proportional to N. V equals to K times N, where K is just some constant multiplied by N. And we know that earlier we said that with molar volume, all volumes of gas have the same number of molecules. This is really Avogadro's law in action, saying that since we have the same volume, same temperature and pressure, they must have the same volume. So the combined gas law is simply just where we combine all the gas laws together. It gives us the relationship that P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2. We know that P is proportional to V, so P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. We put the second one together with the Charles law, V1 on T1 equals to V2 on T2. We also add Gay-Lussac's law, P1 on T1 equals to P2 on T2. So this is how we got the combined gas law to say P1V1 on T1 equals to P2V2 on T2.